Hi everybody, this is my uh, electrical wheel 6 prototype. Yes, it's yellow. No, yours won't be yellow, so don't panic. It's uh, 3D printed. The real ones will be injection moulded and they're all a very dark shade of grey that's almost close to black. I'm showing you today a couple of uh, quill spindle attachments. First one is this one, which is the one Maurice designed and is available on Thingiverse. I uh, tried it out, put it straight in the orifice, and it's just a tiny little bit too loose. Uh, likely due to the fact that my 3D printer isn't that well calibrated. So I've just got a bit of this normal sewing cotton and wrapped it round to uh, pad out the shaft a bit. And that twists in nicely and securely and uh, spins nicely with the flyer. And it is fairly easy to uh, remove still. second one is this one, which is one that I designed. Uh, it's got a uh, 3D printed part that goes in the orifice and uh, then a backstop so it's easier to wind your cop. I designed this to fit but it didn't so I've got one of these teeny tiny elastic bands for uh, doing your hair and uh, put that into the grooves and again that just makes a little bit of extra thickness for it to uh, slot in there and then this is a knitting needle that uh, goes uh, into the base and right through into the flyer. As you can see my knitting needle isn't quite straight because I got it from the knitting needle used for non-knitting things box. It would be better if this was straight. Right, I'm going to try and figure out a position I can both comfortably spin in and you can see so uh, I shall... Okay, this is a quick video of me spinning on my quill spindle on the uh, Electrical Wheel 6. This is the spindle that's got a backstop and a knitting needle in it, which is slightly bent, so uh, it won't be the best of demonstrations. And it won't be that great anyway, because I'm not a very experienced uh, quill spinner. This is my second time of doing it. I've uh, got some wool here. I think it's BFL or Shetland, I'm not sure. Just a nice, easy-to-draft wool. So uh, the idea of quill spinning is that you spin off the tip and uh, then stop and wind on your cop here. So uh, I'll uh, get a bit of this wound on. Wind on like that and then you'll spin about a 45 degree angle to the tip. I am generally a supported long draw spinner so I do find it very hard not to use both hands but I will try. So I've got my arm attenuated, just building up a bit more twist. should be enough. I'll uh, pull that off there and start to wind on. Generally on a quill you will wind on the opposite direction from how you spun but on any spinner that's a little bit fiddly so I think doing it this way is better. Right. And start adding more twists. Draft about 45 degree angle off the tip. That banging noise is not the e-spinner it is uh, the yarn bumping over the end of the not very straight knitting needle. Right, and again, I think that's got enough twist, so I'll stop. I'll give it a little pull so the yarn's level there, and then wind the cop on slowly. And let it go back to the position at the tip, give it a bit more speed, and I have a bit too much twist in there, so I am going to use my front hand to help me. There we go. Even more speed. That's enough. Pull it into position. And wind on. And more twisting. So there you go, you have the general idea of uh, how the quill works. And let's just break that and let it wind off. Right, I'm going to uh, replace my one for Maurice's design. 
Right, I've got his uh, spindle design in. I was going to get going a little bit, but I thought I'll show you how I start off. There may be disasters and breaks. So, uh, start off, I've got my fibre. I've not tied a leader on. I could do, and that would probably be the smart thing to do. But, uh, well, let's make life a bit more difficult. I'm uh, adding a little bit of uh, twist to this fibre and stretching it out a little bit. So, I've got just enough for a leader. Okay, that should be enough. Now, with the design of this, if I tie that on there and pull, it's just going to slide down to the thinner part. So I'm going to tie it at the back here, right up near the uh, orifice, and that will hold it in place nicely. So, that's not it's just sliding down below the fat part. And then, do a double knot. There we go, now that's not going to go anywhere if I pull it in this direction or anyway how I'll be spinning. So back a bit. So, start adding some twists. And there we go, you can see uh, twist is being added off the tip. Turn it up a bit. And again, I've got a bit of a bump. Uh, it's not because this isn't straight, it's pretty close to perfectly straight. It's because uh, the tip's quite fat. And you can see my yarn isn't spinning perfectly off the tip anyway. Uh, okay, that's strong enough. So, uh, I'll wind that on. Pull down to the tip. It's hard to do a 45 degree angle here. I'm pulling some of the yarn off. Conical shape isn't the best, but it works. I think I will cross over a little bit when I'm winding my cop this time and uh, see if I can get it to sit a bit more snug. There's some there, down, and then up, and then down, and then up. Alright, hopefully that'll be a bit more secure now. Uh, there we go, that looks like it's staying in place. I've got a bit too much twist in my drafting supply. So use my front hand. There we go. Okay, pull that out, get it level with there. And I'm ready to wind on. I need my angle to be a little bit steep in the 45 degrees here, but it's working. Yeah, now I've got the hang of it. That's uh, working very well. A little bit more twist. Pull that off, ready to wind up. And there we go. Hope this helps you uh, see how these things work and uh, if you are a quill spindle spinner give you some ideas on what you can do when you get yours.